All right, welcome back to TV3 New Day. It's the first day of the new season. And we're excited to be coming your way. We have a studio audience and we're here at the Gold Coast Bar and Restaurant inside Accra. Cry. It's next to the Ghana Tourist Information Center in Cantonment. So pass through if you're not uh, too far away the breakfast. So I know the moment I say that is we we'll encourage you to join us, right? But let's get down to serious business. And we're discussing the passage of the Affirmative Action Bill. On the 30th of August, which was last Friday, uh, the, some reps from the CSOs uh, decided to embark on a walk, uh, you know, to drum into the ears of government officials the need to pass the bill before the end of 2019. However, there's another side uh, that says that they have been excluded from the details of the bill. And because of that, if they are not included, they will not allow uh, the bill to be passed. And so in the studios, by the way, and this is part of Mission, which is a TV3 um, engagement, and it's supported by Star Ghana with thanks to Danida, UK Aid, and European Union. Next to me, I have Ernest Amar. Them. Well, not against them, mm. but it's to stress mm. and it's to also re reinforce the demands we have always made that the process to the passage of the bill has delayed far too long, far too long yeah. and because of that Ghana is not doing well when compared to other countries in the region yeah. with regards our response to gender equality in participation in access to services and all of that yeah. and we believe that this is the time to mm. act indeed yeah it is the time to act uh, Ernest it's interesting that you know we have a man who's also pushing uh, for the passage of the bill I believe you're pushing for the females around you which is a great thing but did the walk yield any results especially because i realized the minister herself um, was not there when you got to the gender ministry and so you had to interact with the deputy so tell me did it yield any results well i think it did um, if you listen to the um, the reactions that it generated mm. other people getting on board to talk about it 
is, I mean, is one of the objectives that the work sought to achieve. Mm. And more importantly, I'm more interested in the institutional response okay. to the work. You can see that government has come to the realization that, look, the public are very interested in this issue mm. and they are not going to stand down until the, um, the industry institution, that is parliament, and then the executive takes action on it. You see, you can tell what government cares, uh, cares about by what it pays attention to. Yeah. If a bill has been in the works for 13 years That's and over, that clearly tells you that beyond the lip service and all the photo of opportunities, mm. clearly there is lack of political commitment to the process. Yeah. And we want to draw public attention to that and mount pressure on government to do the need for. And I'm definitely in support of that. However, uh, there's a team that is not exactly in support of the passage of the bill, and I introduced them earlier, President's Federation of Disability Organizations. Maunyo, tell me why um, you, know, you are against the passage of the bill as it stands now. Yes, thank you very much. Um, in fact, as a woman, I wish the bill was passed um, yesterday. Mm. Unfortunately, the substance of it is what we are against as um, people who have been marginalized mm. for so long. And we feel that persons with disabilities are more marginalized than the general women. Okay. And I must admit that um, the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations have been consulted in all of these processes. Unfortunately, we make our case, okay, we hear you, and we don't, it's not, it doesn't reflect in the bill. Mm. The last copy of the draft that I saw was something that a replication of um, uh, section 23 of the CLP, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, mm -hmm. which is a right on its own, which refers to family life, reproductive health, fertility, and all of that. And we didn't see any affirmative action in that. Mm. And that is why we felt that as CSO, they, who should have understood our concerns and unfortunately they didn't I mean, see how we were seeing the issues. Mm. When they called for the work we thought we couldn't support because we're not happy. We will not, we will not join so the work. So they did get in touch with you to join them for the work? Of course, yes. Mm. <laughs> we, are, we are part mm. of yeah, civil mm. society. Mm -hmm. we, also, we are also supporting that the affirmative action bill is passed. And so we're supposed to have joined these exercises that put pressure on government. Mm. But we are saying that we can't, we can't allow parliament to pass such a bill that does not include us. What about participation in politics, decision making, employment, education? What, 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 is, the in, what is in for us mm. as persons with disabilities? Or if we say the bill remains gender focused, what is in it for women with disabilities? Mm. For instance, if you are saying 40% of political, political appointments to women, know, yeah. and then later, for instance, if we also generate another affirmative action for persons, then where, where would the statistics be? You understand? Mm. And that is why we feel that even though the bill has delayed, it is better for us to do what is best now mm -hmm. for all citizens of this country mm -hmm. than allowing it to pass as it is. Okay. And when was the last time, Joshua, that you interacted with the CSOs in particular about this problem of yours and what was the response? Um, as a matter of fact, um, I left JFD as the advocacy officer mm. um, early um, last year to give me the opportunity to perpetuate my political ambition okay. where I went to Quantes to be elected the OT Regional Secretary of the New Party nice. Party, okay. the position I'm currently occupying. Congratulations. And before then, we met them uh, through Star Garner support. We even drafted a document for its inclusion. Mm. But we push and we are pushed back. And I see it as very, very unfortunate. And I am telling you, if I remain in Ghana mm. and this bill is passed in its current state, I'll have no other option than to seek asylum somewhere. Wow. It's very suicidal to the future of persons with disability. When we talk of affirmative action, let us all look at it. It has to do with what? Vulnerability and inclusion and protection of our, mm -hmm. the most vulnerable. Let's go to parliament today. Even if there are no enough women, we can see a woman. Mm -hmm. How many persons with disabilities do we have there? Mm. Let's go to the gender ministry. That is a mother ministry uh, taking care of persons with disability. The minister and the deputy, they are all female. Mm. It's a representation. Where are the persons with disability? Let's go to the CSOs who are, uh, what do you call it, pushing us today. How are they included? How have they 
make provision for persons with disability. And we sit down today for this bill to be passed. If government of Ghana has the opportunity to pass an affirmative action bill, and it has to do with what? Uh, vulnerable groups. It should be a comprehensive bill. Mm. We can't have the same parliament sitting down today to pass an affirmative uh, bill for action Only bill for women. women. Tomorrow they go and do that for youth. Uh, then the another day they go and sit down for that. How are we trying to help government to protect the public purse? Knowing that we are living in an economy where resources are already scarce. Mm. So I think that CSO's affirmative action is something we fully support. That, but the bill in its current state does not taste good is enemical to the future of persons with disability. And we will okay. plead and we ask the government of Ghana, the parliament of Ghana, to exercise some restraint to hmm. ensure that we get back to the drawing board and get a comprehensive affirmative action bill but, where every Ghanaian is. Okay, included. but that's like going back another 13 years because already it's taken 13 years. We're still fighting uh, for the passage. If we are going to have to revise the details of this bill, does it not mean a retrogression? Well, I think I want to be emphatic on the point that we, we are not different groups. Yeah. That the, 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 the group supporting this campaign is not different from the, okay. the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations. And we do agree with them that a bill as this should be very inclusive. Mm -hmm. We do also agree that there has to be a whole understanding of what should be contained in a bill. Mm. So for example, as she said, we, women is not a homogeneous group. You have different segments of okay. women, okay. of which women with disability is one group. Mm -hmm. So you have women who are less literate, um, women who reside in, you know, lo you know all kinds. Grass, yeah. all kinds. Yeah. So for a bill to be that uh, descriptive and detailed is one issue we have to look at mm. if it's possible but i want to also come back to the point of we have as I, when i say we i'm speaking for star ghana foundation mm -hmm. we have supported the ghana federation of disability organizations to engage with the bill okay. for the past two years and our experience is that access to the ministry is very closed mm. so the the demand of this campaign is that move the bill from executive to parliament okay. where there is also opportunity to engage and indeed we have worked with the ghana federation of disability organizations on the land bill the yeah. draft land bill yeah. where we had a joint process to ensure that women's interests and issues of uh, women with disability okay. is integrated okay. mm. and why did we do that we did that when the bill was laid in parliament mm. because when okay. a bill gets laid in parliament parliament will call for memos parliament will have consultation with interest group parliament will even sit with interest groups to do close to close evaluation of the provisions and we think that because it has delayed so long with the with the ministry mm -hmm. an opportunity is to get it moved into parliament where we can re-engage and i think that we have that opportunity to 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 rally around yeah. otherwise we will risk facing the same challenge we had in 2016 mm -hmm. when the bill was laid in parliament yeah. in october mm -hmm. where mps are on their campaign and all of that and the bill was not passed if we miss that opportunity we engage the bill under the new government, under the new minister and all of that. Exactly. So we are on the same page mm. that we want a bill that addresses vulnerability, we want a bill that addresses exclusion, particularly of women okay. and women of different kinds, including women with disabilities. Mm. If we are not getting access to sit around the table with the ministry, we know that parliament has a very serious role to play in legislation. And we can use that space to make more input. GFD has position paper that can be brought on board. Mm. What we don't want is to keep the whole process silent, nothing being done, mm. only to start re-engaging severally. And let me quickly say that some countries that started this process with Ghana have yeah. concluded yeah. their bill. Go we have ahead. Rwanda, we have Guinea, we have Malawi, and they have spent less of the total amount in getting this bill done. We continue with consultations here and there. There's lack of political will. There is no cohesion mm -hmm. among us. So we are inviting 
GFD, and we have done that severally, okay. that we are not leaving anybody behind. What is paramount is that the issues of women is upfront, okay. and then the women with different needs, expectations, also... and here and there. And that we can come together on when the bill is laid in parliament. But before that, the ministry has to move it to cabinet mm. and, and, and all of that. So you can say that we want to continue engaging the ministry. The ministry is not making input. And Maunyo and I were at an event where we engaged the director of gender department yeah. who mentioned, as we talk now, we haven't seen the latest draft of the bill. No. What we yeah. have is the 2018 one, you know, where some issues were had to be defined by the attorney general. We haven't seen the latest bill, but we got confirmation from the director that the input that GFD made, that let's be categorical on women with disabilities. She mentioned that that has been taken into consideration. Okay. So I think that one of the things we should be asking for is the current bill yeah. as it is. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of inputs have been raised, they have been integrated, but we haven't seen you're saying a lot yeah. of inputs have been integrated, but she's still um, insisting. Well, you were going to say something. She yeah, still mentioned yeah. that they felt excluded uh, from the bill. So, is it um, at the point where she said, I thought we were talking about an affirmative action bill, but if I can deduce from what she's saying, mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a gender sensitive bill. Okay. But if we talk about affirmative action, yeah. it has to do with vulnerability. Yeah. Excuse me. A woman gender. without disability yeah. and a man in clutches, yeah. that man is more vulnerable yeah. Yeah. when it comes to access and participation yeah. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we are it. not only asking for the inclusion of what? Only women with disability with specific references. But we are talking about what? vulnerability yeah. and it should be all persons with disability devoid of what gender mm. yeah. and where she got to we push it when i was advocacy uh, officer what star ghana uh, supported us to do was to incorporate the a comprehensive um, what they call it position paper mm -hmm. that covers all persons with disability but when we got to the negotiation table their stance we're trying to reduce the bill to what a gender yes. sensitive bill. Okay. And we even try proposing that if that is the case, it should not be an affirmative activity. Mm -hmm. It should be what? A gender equality what? Bill. Okay. That, that's what we, 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 we are trying to say. So um, if we are getting somewhere, yeah. let us agree that. Yeah. Disability should be included, not only women with disability. Yes. And that is not going to take us yeah. years to do that. Yeah. It's something that we have document. We have a position paper on that. It's just an insertion into whatever bill we have now and work at it. Because I would not feel very comfortable mm -hmm. if the minister goes ahead to push this bill to parliament. It gets to parliament there, and you have women, uh, female parliamentarians, and no uh, person with disability, mm -hmm. we say parliamentarian, mm -hmm. to even... Uh, speak for us. But are you sure this is not going to prolong the process? Because no. maybe that is what they are trying to avoid, if I may get you right. Um, you know, the fact that we are trying to get it passed whilst Parliament, you know, is in session now. And so, uh, Bella, sorry, let me mention that the title of the bill is Affirmative Action into Bracket Gender Equality Bill. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you are still stressing on the fact that it is gender yeah, towards yes. women yes. in particular yes. okay so what i was going to say that okay if we can't get because the minister of gender who uh, the minister writes the memorandum mm. that defines what is in the bill mm -hmm. and so once that, that that position is clearly stated in the memorandum mm. it means that there can be no input so actually we withdrawing from the work it also send some information that if the minister of gender will actually accept what we are saying to change the memorandum mm. from its focus of being a gender equality bill to an equity bill, mm -hmm. an affirmative equity bill. Mm. Do you get it? Yeah. So that we can now bring on board all other persons with disabilities. But if they still want it to, main, to maintain as a gender focus, then there should be stronger provisions for women with disabilities. Hmm. There was no way that in our position paper we had stated a uh, reproductive health and marriage mm. and all that. Okay. Those are rights in itself. Mm -hmm. How, wh where, where is the affirmative action there? Okay. Let me ask again. You understand? And then there was no, all our document was just put aside. We, uh, we actually had a whole consultant help us clause by clause, supported mm. by Star Ghana. Yeah, all of that effort, just, just put aside, and just you just put in marriage and reproductive health. Please, 
if the bill will go as it is, take that off because we that is our right. Mm. We, yes, mm. you understand. Okay. Employment. If now if this bill passes, every institution that is recruiting. 40 percent as it is treated now there will some be percentage for women okay and the gender officer or the gender desk will be reporting to the gender committee now if there are no specifics for let's say women with disabilities yeah if it's going to remain uh, gender focused then well, we are left out the sustainable development goal clearly state leave no one behind mm. and you should bring the fathers first i mean what and once we have actually ratified as a country the convention on the rights of persons with disabilities disability is the twin track approach mm. the fact that we have a disability act and that is what we have been told in the face mm. that you have a disability act so push your issues there no we can have a standalone legislation mm. and that is fully supported in the 1992 constitution mm -hmm. the same constitution also provides for equality and ways of addressing inequality okay. through an affirmative action and so it is clear we can use both approaches mainstreaming disability in new policies new laws everything and not to say that we have a disability and so every everything on disability is in there okay i don't think yeah. because the yeah, better, bill better has better delayed yeah. i don't think because the bill has delayed and so we should we go should ahead rush. and mm. push something that will leave a segment of this population out okay okay yeah, you better, wanted better, to come yes, in better, quick one. So, here is the thing you see what we are doing right now we are having a conversation yeah. we are engaging this is what we could have done before the walk. I think withdrawing but, from the walk was, but, wasn't the best of options. We could have said, had these conversations. Mm -hmm. We could have discussed this. They could have joined and could have still gone ahead to articulate these issues. But did you give issues. that opportunity? Because mm -hmm. clearly it looked like you were organizing we, your thing. We are, we are, we are all on one platform. Not at all. Okay. Yes. Okay. And all these issues were not, not raised No, again. we are discussing not this here. Not at all. Not at all. We are now discussing yeah, this. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying, that we could yeah. have discussed this, yeah. all of this, mm. before moving ahead to withdraw from the walk. Yeah. So if they had, yeah. you know, put... Of yeah. course, yeah. I mean, you would have withdrawn this are, this are, the walk. We would mean, have discussed because right from the launch of the campaign, mm. we have been engaging, and there are different people in the Ghana Federation of Disability Organization. Mm. We did invite them to make input even into the fact sheet on the bill. Okay. We, so we have been involving them and we knew that they had concerns. What we didn't know was that they were going to raise a statement on the day of the walk asking their members to withdraw. Mm. So we think that, and uh, let me emphasize that, we are not pursuing different interests. We are pursuing interests of women. Okay. Women made up of different groups and we support a Star Ghana Foundation and this cluster, we have worked collaboratively on issues of disability, on issues of women. We mm. don't think that we should leave anybody behind. We do uh, fully endorse that slogan, leave nobody behind. And I think what is important is to be having conversation in a constructive way, in a manner that makes us win. Okay. In a okay. manner that makes us win. Mm. Because if we keep uh, having different opinions about this bill what happens is that it gets further delayed yeah nobody course. benefits no woman benefits no woman with disability benefits no other category benefits so we should be coming again to the, the table what are the inputs that have to be made and also see if we can receive more support to have the access to the ministry more you know okay. open okay so yeah. that we, we have a bill first of all that addresses the issues but we also have a bill that is passed okay. so that yeah. it can be implemented yeah, all right affirmative so, action bill isn't necessarily a loss for all right well so way, way forward I, I believe that we should have this discussion further right. uh, so that we can both agree on on what can be done my, my time is almost up i'll take your last words yeah. Okay. Um, we are ready to sit around again, but the only the issue is we've done that. It's not that we've not been consulted in the past, yeah. but we go back. Oh, you have a case. We will find it. We will include it. We go back and it's not done. Okay. So you need rightly stated. We have actually pushed to get the current if written to the ministry, mm. and yet that was not given to us. Okay. So we don't even know as it is now. Whether there's a redefinition, the definition of women to include women with disabilities, mm. as it, was it actually, is it there? Okay. We need to verify all of that. We right. actually requested. We are two citizens. We want to know what mm -hmm. it means for us. Yeah. And unfortunately, it wasn't that. Okay. You understand? And okay. so it's not we are against the war. We are just saying that we are not happy.
right. but it's not that we are against the efforts in ensuring that the bill gets to parliament no all so right. we are ready to sit again even if all of our recommendations are not taken at least some some, some specifics it who should be addressed will be very happy all yeah. right but for nothing at all no. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm looking forward to, um, you know, this yielding some results between the two parties so we can move ahead. And, of course, pass this bill once everyone is satisfied to a certain extent. And this is where we'll wrap up this conversation. I wish we had time, but unfortunately <laughs> we don't. Eunice Agbenyaji is the Gender Equality and Social Inclusion Manager, Star Ghana, also the facilitator of those that are calling for the passage of the Affirmative Action Bill. Thank you so much. Uh, she came along with Ernest Arma, who's a member of the CSO Cluster of Decentralization and Participation. And Maunyo Yako uh, Dagba, President's Federation of Disability Organizations, and Joshua Yak Makubu, pardon me, Disability Advocate, and member of Advocacy Committee. Thank you all so much for engaging in this conversation with me. And come 2020, we definitely must get some good results. Yeah? yeah? All right. An inclusive bill. Definitely an inclusive bill. <laughs>